Good evening. Um, uh, good to be back on the court. You now these games are coming quickly in the early part of the season. You know, I got another one Tuesday night against Hampton. Um, you know, proud of some things we did, some improvement from opening night. Um, you know, Stonehill presents challenges defensively because uh, they play a lot of off-ball screening. A lot of teams in college basketball, it's on ball, on ball, ball screen, ball screen, dribble drive. Um, and they have good shooters. So it, it put, put some stress on our defense. But I thought our guys adjusted well, got to sit down and guard, and um, found a way to win. Um, you know, it's, it's just good for us to get out on the court. And, and, and we have to learn in the fire at this early juncture because of all the well-documented stuff we had in the preseason. Um, you know, we have just high stakes opportunities to play right now that, you know, we would have loved to have in practice. But um, still learning. Obviously, 21 turnovers is tough to even hear or say. But, um, you know, I'm glad we won. You know, we're healthy. And um, get back to work tomorrow and prepare for Hampton on Tuesday night. Uh, questions for Jabri? Jabri, you back to, you know, how are you just into feeling, you know, back in the rotation with this team after what you've been through the last month? Um, I feel good. Uh, I was out a couple weeks with a little injury, so just getting back out there, getting able to run up and down, mm -hmm. um, being out there with my teammates, feel good. Uh, feel good to kind of get back in the rhythm. How about to be back with these guys? You know, after you know the emotional issues that you had with your uh, with your uncle as well, it's going to be good to be back with your friends. Yeah, it makes it easier um, playing a game I love with uh, my teammates who I love. Um, Everybody has been really supportive, especially uh, everybody in the prior community. So just um, being back on the court and, and being back on campus uh, has been great. Uh, it makes things easier uh, during a tough time. Jeffrey, I think it was something like a 25 to 9 run to close out the first half. Is that a positive that you guys can take away from this game? Yeah, I think um, just the way we finish halves um, is important. Um, that's what we, we talked about that in the last media, trying to hunker down and get and get stops. Um, and then, you know, that will lead to offense. Um, so, you know, just letting our, our defense at the end of the half kind of create offensive opportunities is, is what we try to do. Kim kind of talked about how defensively they caused some problems. Do you think you guys, when you went before you got out of run, kind of saw some things defensively and that allowed you guys to get a good rhythm offensively? I think so. Um, you know, we, we knew they were a good shooting team, so um, trying to apply ball pressure and get, and get there um, on their three-point shots is, is what we focused on. Um, and like I said at the last media, we tried to um, make it a point to, to finish the half with some defensive stops. So that led to you know um, good opportunities on offense. How much is this team kind of learning how to play with each other on the fly? You mentioned you were out a little bit, some other guys out with injuries. Like, you know, here's the season starting. How much is this just really kind of learning on the fly right now? I think um, it's just about getting better. Um, we get better every practice. We get better every game. Um, like you said, we had some injuries. And you know, this is kind of our first couple times playing together, everybody healthy. So I think it's important um, that we take all these opportunities, practices, games, and stuff just to mesh well as a team. And I think it's going to help us going forward. Did the first half kind of feature like a little bit of the power of the depth of this group as well? I think 11 guys sort of minutes. I mean, yeah, we, we have a lot of good players. Everybody on our team um, stays ready to play and, and is capable of, of producing. So um, I think that just speaks, like you said, 11 people play. I think that speaks to, to the talent level and the, and the depth we have on our, on our team. Jabri, uh, condolences first. Um, secondly, you, shooters, they, they seem to like a pass after a paint touch or out of a post more. You get the 10 toes to line three as opposed to maybe you know, perimeter or, or off the dribble. Why is that? For me personally, um, I just think if I can catch it cleanly, um, I feel like I'm, I'm taller than most people who guard me in my position. So all this stuff about the inside out passes, a lot of it doesn't matter to me as long as I get a clean catch and I can look at the rim, I feel confident that I can make it. You, you seem to find rhythm pretty quickly tonight. You, offensively, did it, did it feel better in the first half? Than um, I think uh, my first shot was a bad shot. And then I kind of settled down and, and took an open one. And I made it. Um, coach says all the time, you know, good shots, great shots go in. I took two great shots, two wide open shots, and they both went in. So I kind of let that um, get me going a little bit. Um, Bonk and, and Justin made two really good passes. So 
they helped me get going. Jabri, is there anything you're willing to share about just emotionally what you and your family have gone through over the past few weeks? Anything you might want to say? Um, I just think um, my uncle and I were very close. He was very close to, to everybody in our family. Um, he was a great man. Outside of my dad, him and my dad are the two best men that I know. So it's been a tough time. Um, but like I said, you know, playing with my teammates, playing with my brothers makes things easier. And every time I step on the court, I want to represent him the best way possible by playing the right way, playing for my teammates, being coachable, all the things that he talked to me about all the time. So I think um, every time I go out there on the court, I'm playing for him, and I'm trying to represent him to the best of my ability. All questions for Jabri? Thank you, Jabri. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for Coach? Kid, 11 guys saw significant minutes tonight. Uh, a lot of figuring out who pairs well with who, but eventually how is this lineup going to look? How many guys are you going to rotate? Yeah, I'd say we're like, we're probably like three weeks behind right now. You know, these are all the things we would have loved to figure out, you know, at St. Joe's um, a month ago, whenever it was, a few weeks ago, events, UMass a few weeks ago. but. Guys are still fighting for rotational minutes. And that's without Bryce Hopkins in, you know, who you can plug in high 20s, low 30 minutes per game. So it's still a fight for minutes to clinch. I mean, we don't, the starting group, we're still evaluating and seeing. We're like two or three weeks behind right now. So, um, you know, yeah, we're giving guys opportunities. Um, we have depth, which, plays into our hands with all the energy we expend defensively. We play really hard on defense, and we're wanting to play harder and better on offense. Um, so we're looking to see who can be, who can play that hard on defense and be efficient on offense, who can take care of the ball, who can execute what we want, who can make free throws, um, which we're still trying to find out. And Jaden was on a minute restriction as well tonight. You know, he was good. I mean, he kept him under. Kid, was the, is the turnover number a bit of a function of, like you said, you guys are behind and guys are behind? Yeah, we are behind. We are behind. We don't play basketball in this building outside of game day, pretty much. Um, so it's, it's, you know, I'm not making excuses. You know, I'm just trying to, maybe it is a little game day jitters. Um, you know, it's different. But the, the, uh, our challenge as a team is get the heart rate, get the energy, get the fire, get the heat up to what it feels like in games in practice. If it feels like it feels in games, I think that the games will feel less erratic. Right now, 21 turnovers is ridiculous. Um, you know, in a game that our effective field goal was 58%, which is really good. Um, it's just imagine what we could have done with 21 more shots. We saw Ryan make his debut tonight. Was that the player you saw when you scouted him with Middlesex, like confident going right to the basket? Yeah, he's a hooper. He's a hooper. Um, really hard to stay in front of him. Um, tough, great moxie feel. He's not rattled by hard coaching. I, um, I kind of took was taken back a couple of weeks ago. You know, he did something I just said not to do in practice, and I really, really lit into him, got into him. And you could hear a pin drop in the gym, and he, he chuckled like he laughed at me. And, and uh, I thought it was a great moment. I love having players that just got that, mm, you know, he got that it. He's a natural. He's just a hooper, and uh, we love him. Kim, how about you three big guys? You've talked a lot about them. You like them all. They obviously have an awful lot of potential. Uh, they also seem to offer different things. Right? Is that maybe kind of the good thing about it? Is you can mix, mix and match a little bit? Yeah, they do. All, you know, obviously, Bonk's just sheer size. Uh, Bonk's willingness to do whatever you tell him to do. He's as coachable as a player you'll ever come across. Crease, his God gift, God given ability is passing, you know, his size, seven foot, you know, north of 270. And Oswin's just, you know, freakish athleticism, both defensively and offensively. Um, really want to make sure we're playing all three of them. Tonight was a tough game with their ability to stretch the floor. Um, would love to get to a chance to get to an opportunity to play those guys together. 
So we like them on the court. I think in Big East play, more opportunities to play them together. Um, maybe in Atlanta, some opportunities to play them together will present itself when we play bigger teams. But um, love the development of those three. To think it's two sophomore and a freshman, um, you know, the future is bright for those three young men. Kim, did you see any progress today from the first game into today? Yeah, I did. I did. Um, obviously, our, our shooting was better from a field goal percentage standpoint. Turnovers were still sloppy. I'll go back and watch them. Um, you know, I thought we were better. I thought we were better. But again, Central Connecticut State is a good team. They just beat a St. Joe's team with three NBA players on it. Xavier Brown, um, Kid Reynolds, and, um, and Rashir Fleming. It's a very, very good team. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll keep getting better. Kim, how is uh, Bryce and how is he progressing? He's doing great. He's, he's, he's jumping in live stuff more and more. He's in, I'm wanting him to do more. He's kind of in a, in a dilemma of wanting to get in, but also wanting the guys that are going to play to get reps. Um, I'm going to go talk to our doctors now. Um, his legs are strong. His knee is strong. Uh, symmetry is good. The bend is good. Um, I think he's close. Is he, would you have a chance for, I'm sorry, Billy, uh, the go. Bahamas? Um, I think there's a chance. Yeah, I think there's a chance, yeah. I was just going to ask if, if he's in contact or scrimmaging or anything like that. Yeah, he's doing contact stuff. He's in practice. He's in practice growing, increasing his, um, his confidence. You know, we had like an impromptu one-on-one -on -one game the other day, and it was really the first live thing he did, and it was real. And, you know, on the drive home, I called him and checked in, and he felt really good about it. He felt good. He was big. He was powerful. Um, he was sliding his feet. He was scoring. He was, he's, in, he's, um, he's getting better every day. Did we see some of the offensive gifts that you maybe saw when you scouted Wes? Yeah. Again, you know, this early in the season with new guys, Wesley Cardett's played for uh, Bucky McMillan. He's played for his uncle, Gerald Gillian, now us. Jabri Abdul-Rahim's played for Tony Bennett, uh, Tom Crean, Mike White, and now us. That's Tom. There, there's obviously us. There's them adjusting to what we do here at Providence, but it's also us adjusting to them, putting him in different spots, seeing what he likes, seeing we went right at him the first play of the game, got him a, a matchup we liked, and he made a great play. Um, you know, uh, this thing isn't as quick as I think society would want it. It's a process, and today was another step in the right direction. Good to see him five for nine for the field, eight, eight rebounds, one turnover, plus ten. I thought West did some good things tonight. Kim, did you and Bryce play one on one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, score check on that? He's a big boy. He's a big boy. Any more questions? All right, thanks, guys.